When I think about Christmases of yesterday, one of the first things that comes to my mind was uh, the way Dad always trimmed the Christmas tree. Uh, the first Christmases I remember were, I would imagine, around 1936 or 37. We lived at 1321 First Avenue. And I remember that on Christmas Eve, when we went to bed, the uh, Christmas tree was always out on the back porch. And uh, the next day, we would always wonder why Dad was so tired around the middle of the day. In fact, he always fell asleep right after the noon meal. What we didn't realize was that Dad would uh, put the tree up after we went to bed. And in those days, in Altoona, it wasn't just a tree. We had a platform, and under the platform we had a, a train with, with houses that were lit. And this was after we had gone to bed. And uh, whenever we woke up in the morning, uh, before we came downstairs, Dad would start the, uh, the train running around the tree, and the lights would all be lit, and, and we'd come down, and, and uh, this whole thing was like a, a miracle to us. We'd, we'd see it for the first time. We didn't, uh, as I said, we didn't realize uh, how much work Dad put into it after we went to bed, but later on he told me how uh, each Christmas Eve he would go to work on the uh, tree and all the neighbors did the same thing. Some of the neighbors back then were oh, Louis Ina Suver and Tom Burgess and Jim Albright. They were some that lived close by us. And it, it seemed that whoever got their tree done first, they would go to the neighbor's house next and they would help the neighbor till they got their tree done and, and their trains running and uh, at each house they'd have cookies and again it usually ended up around 4 35 o'clock in the morning until the whole neighborhood had their trees and trains up then the next day after we had opened our presents we would all go around to the different neighbors homes and we'd go in and you know we'd rap on the door and we'd say uh, like Mrs. Burgess, can I see your Christmas tree? And they'd say, sure, Jim, come on in. And we'd go in and we'd see their tree and their platform. And, and then they would give us uh, always a treat. They would give you candy or fruit, uh, whatever, whatever they had. Then, as I think back, I tried to remember the uh, first Christmas present that I, that I got, that I remember. And uh, back when I was uh, a boy, uh, my folks would always, about November, give us a, a Spickle catalog to look at. And they would say, look over this and get some idea what you would like Santa to bring you, but uh, it has to be under $3. And it's pretty hard to get something $3 on the nose, but as I recall, looking through that catalog, I used to find something that was around $2.98, I guess. And I can remember the first present was a, uh, a football kit. And uh, it was 298, and I guess I was probably about six or seven years old. And I got a football, a pump, a needle valve, and a helmet. And the helmet was like uh, fiberboard; it was like simulated leather. And I remember it came in two colors: one was blue and gold, and the other was maroon and tan. And it was kind of like a, a Michigan University of Michigan helmet. It had the stripes and the curled things like, and, and uh, I figured it was the closest to Altoona I could get, so I had that maroon and tan helmet. And I picked it out, and sure enough, Santa Claus brought it to me. Then the other thing uh, I got that year, and you only got one present uh, back in those days, uh, the other thing I got was uh, uh, kind of an uh, updated model of one of my old toys. It seemed that back before Christmas, Dad would sneak away one of your toys and he would redo it for you for Christmas. And uh, that year uh, he took my uh, scooter and he repainted it tan and uh, he replaced the back wheel. It was one of these scooters that you step back on the brake uh, and the brake would put pressure on the rear wheel. And, and uh, we lived up First, First Avenue and 13th Street and that hill on First Avenue between 14th and 15th Street was pretty steep. And it was pretty hard on the brakes, and so the rear wheel got pretty bad. So that Christmas, in addition to the football set, I got a uh, tan paint job on my scooter, 
and a new rear wheel, and of course Dad wheeled it up and so on. One other thing was that Grandma Slick used to come up to our house on, on Christmas Day uh, from Pleasant Valley. She would ride up on the, uh, on the bus and uh, she would have Christmas dinner and, and uh, we'd give her a gift and she always had a gift for us. But I remember she always had to be home before dark because she raised chickens and sold the eggs for money. And uh, so if the weather was nice, uh, we would walk down through, through Oak Ridge Cemetery down to, uh, to her home in Pleasant Valley. But if the weather was bad, uh, she would go home on the bus the way she came. Uh, I, guess, I guess that's the main things that I remember as I think on Christmas is past. Down through the years, uh, I've had a lot of Merry Christmases uh, with uh, family and, and friends, and uh, I hope that uh, whoever is looking at this uh, tape that Gary's uh, putting together, uh, I hope that you have a, a Merry Christmas, not only this year, but many Merry Christmases in, in the years to come.